Hi everyone, it's Wendy. I'm back today to show you how to finish the cover. Uh, and I, um, I've i already put the hole in here in the front and the two in the back with the eyelets. I had filmed it, but unfortunately uh, someone, my supervisor, knocked over my tripod. So it's not on film uh, anymore. So I just, what I did was I, on the front cover, <clears throat> I selected what I thought was about the middle and then I went about a quarter of an inch in from the outside and put a hole in. No eyelets in that hole and then on the back I looked at where I eyeballed the center and then I went about a half to three quarters of an inch on either side of that for these two holes using the bigger hole on my crocodile and then I put my eyelets in there and secured them. So. That's what we've got done so far. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm using this um, Tim Holtz, uh, gosh, it's like a, it's a knob, um, like a cabinet knob or I call it a doorknob, but you just have to take out the, the screw out of the back. And you probably for this front one could use the smaller hole on the crocodile. Um, the smaller hole punch and um, yeah I'm just gonna screw that in there you want to do it in a way that making sure that the the width of your whatever you're putting in whether it's a hitch post or whatnot that there's still card or still chipboard on, on the other side of it. I just think that looks a little bit better. So I've selected a couple of uh, a piece of paper and an image that I want to put on the front here. Pardon me, and all I did was tear around this piece of paper and this is a um, piece of um, just uh, it's plate information from um, a botanical book and then I want to put this on top of it. I think that would look really, really, really pretty. So I think the first thing we want to do is just do a little bit of inking here around the outside of the uh, image. Not too much. Or I don't want to do too much, but that's totally up to you, whatever your aesthetic is. We'll do a little inking around this one as well. Again, I'm not overdoing it with the inking. I want it to look aged, but I don't want it to have a, a grungy sort of feel. Okay, now. I feel like I've got to sneeze. <clears throat> I'm just going to stand up so that I can center everything. So I want to put my Fabri-Tac on the back. Sorry if I'm creating, probably am creating shadows. <clears throat> Excuse me. Fabri-Tac on the back and I want to get it right to the edge on this one and then I'll do a little Skiff on the inside, and then I'm just going to center it on here, like so. Yeah, I think that's going to look really nice, really, really nice. So, I thought, what if we, on the other book that I made, I put a like a little piece of ribbon up there in that corner. <clears throat> So I've just got my Tim Holtz tool and I got, this is a new one guys, I got it from my dear friend Wendy. Thank you Wendy. <laughs> I had so many comments from folks about how rough my old one looked. It just gives this a little more texture and I've got the number seven. This is also a Tim Holtz uh, piece and I just connect it there. And now we just want to put a whole lot of glue on the back here 
You could put stitching around this if you want it. Um, totally up to you. Uh, I'm not going to bother with that. Um, sometimes I do that <clears throat> for something on the cover and sometimes other times not. It really depends on the cover. It kind of tells me. I know that sounds goofy, doesn't it? But it does. It kind of tells me what it wants. Sometimes it just it needs it for stability and other times you're like, oh, I could use a little more texture. I'm going to stand up again just to make sure we get this where we want it. So... I think that looks really nice. Really nice. Okay, just going to rub that down a little bit. Excellent. So the other thing I thought I would do, now I've done this on, on others that I've made, is I've put a little piece of lace at the bottom. And this is some vintage lace. And I've just kind of sat it in around here. And then I usually take a, a little saying. This one is about fairies. Garden fairies come at dawn, bless the flowers, then they're gone. Because I plan on using, um, I'm going to cut this off. I plan on using Mrs. Cog's uh, fairies um, digi on this. So I, um, I want it to have fairy sayings throughout the book. And that's what I've done already. I've taken fairy quotes that I found online and I've put them... Um, in the book. All right, let's see if this is going to do the trick for us. I took that little layer at the top off because I found it was a little bit thick, uh, thicker than I wanted to have. So I like a little bit like that that's going to flow a little. And then we're going to take this saying and you could decorate this any way you want. You know that, of course. So, we we'll just put a little more glue on here. I am going to stand up to make sure I have this straight. And we'll stick that on. Let's see, it's not quite straight yet. Yes, I inked around that. It was, I do it in Word and then I coffee stain the paper and then I just inked around the outside. Gosh, that looks pretty. Really, really happy with that cover. Okay, so next, I've taken a piece of um, muslin, a thin piece of muslin, and I've sewn on it a piece of sari silk um, just to give it more texture, really. So I'm going to turn this over, and hopefully I can do this on screen, because sometimes it can be a little fiddly. So we're going to pull it through the eyelet. We're going to try and do it to halfway, <laughs> and pull it through on the other side as well. And I'm, I know there are other ways to accomplish this. Um, you, you do you. You do whatever works for you. This is just what I've had some success with. And I'm just going to turn that around. And what I do is I take this and I tie it to a spot that seems comfortable. And then I just tie a little bow in it, like so. And I think I just love the texture that having that stitching on there uh, gives. And it does give more reinforcement to the side. I've got threads hanging off this because that's the look I was going for. So then if you want to open it, you just push down and pull that off. And what's nice about this is if someone adds more pages and whatnot, then they can just um, make the bow smaller, like extend the length of the bow. or they, And you can easily change what you have for the tie. Maybe you want to put a, a red tie on it or to match the berries or whatever. 
So very quickly, let's have a look at where I am with this book. Um, sorry, I've got the... That's one thing with the rings. It helps to have this part, the hinge part of the ring at the bottom so that the pages will open more freely. So I've got a tuck spot here and I'm going to use, like I said, um, I'm going to sew the fairy book digis from Mrs. Cog onto coffee stain paper. I've got the whole set. I'm going to sew those and I'm going to add those to the book. Uh, and you'll see that because I'll do a flip through of the finished book. But this is the sort of thing that I've done. Uh, and I added a little bit more, put a tea card and a little more lace on the CD case. A little bit of hardware there. Um, the, the tuck spot, a little bit of washi, that sort of thing and more lace. So I will, I won't bore you by showing it to you all now, but I will show it to you when, uh, when it's completely finished. So um, I just thought I would pop on, we'd do the cover. And now guys, we're finished. Woohoo! Thank you for joining me for the Ringbound Journal series. I hope it was helpful. I would love to see what you all are making. Um, if you make something, uh, please send me a picture through my Etsy. I would love to see it through the conversations. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Take care. Bye.